Our hearts and minds from across the world are with the people of Paris and France. They're also with the 2.3 million innocent Iraqis who have died since the war started in Iraq on regime change. And half of Syria that is living in refugee camps. The thousands of Syrians who have died trying to escape the tragedy of war in their lands, one of the oldest civilizations of this planet, the Fertile Crescent. And my heart particularly goes out to three-year-old little Elan Kurdi, whose little body was washed aside on the shore on the 2nd of September of 2015. We pay a loving and a silent tribute to all victims of violence and unnecessary violence that has become the way of life. And our societies are spiraling out of control in these vicious cycles where violence is breeding more violence, which is breeding more violence. It is time to pause. It is time to think and reflect on the root causes of the growing violence. We have built too many walls, too many screens that are making us blind. Walls of separation that make us live under illusion that we are separate from nature. And every step of building this illusion deeper is seen as freedom from nature. But we can never be outside nature because nature gives us life. The earth is our base of sustenance. She is our mother. There's also a violent separation of people from their place, of people from the land that sustains them. It began with that very violent papal bull of 1493, justifying the takeover and destruction of barbarians. And I do feel it is now time to stop using that word because it is such a violent colonial word. Should never have had a place in 1493, should not definitely have a place in 2015 in the way we talk about each other. Most of the First Nations of the Americas were decimated. Most of the Aboriginal people who left such a small footprint that even though they managed the entire Australian continent like a garden, we thought it was the bush, the wilderness. We have that capacity. But then we've created another separation the separation in time, a forgetting, a forgetting how things evolve, how situations come to be. And one of the most serious forgettings is the beginning of violence in Syria, beginning with the 2009 extended drought that led to a million pastoralists and farmers being displaced with 80% of the crops failed, 75% of the lively livestock finished. A million people flocking into cities will create instability in the most stable of societies. We must remember Syria was not part of the Arab Spring. There had been no protest till that terrible drought. And what was the drought a result of? Land use policies, Agriculture models fed by the powerful institutions of the West, calling destruction of the land and soil and water and destruction of the diversity of our seeds, development. And then you have the Bretton Woods institutions, the World Banks, just waiting in the wings after they have trapped countries in debt to use that debt to further twist the arm and prevent countries from taking steps for sustainability and justice. I have witnessed this in India, where first we were forced to adopt chemical agriculture as the green revolution in the 60s. 
by the 80s there was an emergence of violence in the state of Punjab. It was about the land, it was about the soil, it was about farmers' livelihoods. It was mutated in the false history and the false narrative into religion, just as what's happening today in Syria. And then in 91, when the debt for the Green Revolution piled up, the World Bank tells us to further liberalise agriculture, open up our markets to the global corporations that came from the wars, can only function like war industry, can only think through wars. So war against the land is triggering wars between people. 2007, the World Bank started to give recipes of structural adjustment to Syria, preventing the government from responding to its farmers. And we know the story of how that rebellion that came from a failed agriculture model was turned into an opportunity for global military powers to find another market for their weapons, for their drones, for their bombs. You cannot solve the problems that lie in misuse and abuse of the soil with sending out more and more drones. What the crisis of Syria or the crisis of Punjab or the crisis of Nigeria is inviting us to do is to make peace with the earth, to turn to the earth, apologize, and then commit ourselves to say, we will take care. Because in taking care of you, we take care of each other. The story of Boko Haram is so similar to what's happened with Syria, except that there aren't military powers intervening in a war. But there is violence and there is a militarised response. Lake Chad, the biggest lake of northern Africa, according to records in 500 BC, was more than a million square kilometres. In 1966, it was 22,000 square kilometres. In 73, it had shrunk to 15,000. 82, it dropped to 2,200 square kilometres. And by 94, it was just 1,756 square kilometres. 2001, it had become one-fifth, 1,500 square kilometres. And in 2008, it's a stretch of 20 by 40 kilometres, a tenth of what it used to be. That abundant water supported 30 million people in four countries, Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad and Niger. And as the ill-advised development model came and said, dam up your rivers, irrigate your crops, become free of nature, dams were built, water was diverted from the lake, water was stolen from the people. We know that organic farming allows the water to stay in the soil. You don't need repeated irrigation. Irrigation, it, constant intensification is required in water thirsty soils which are the chemically fertilized soils. So the violence of the chemical fertilizers that came from the war is leading to an ever increasing appetite for water, killing our rivers, killing our lakes, killing our societies. As the United Nations Convention on Desert Combating Desertification, the last Secretary General, Luc Nada, has said so clearly, the depletion of Lake Chad helped create the conditions for conflict. In much of northern Nigeria, Muslim herders are in competition with Christian farmers for dwindling water resources. The so-called religious fight is actually about access to vital resources. And the resources of the earth are shrinking as man, in his ignorance and violence, is disrupting the nature cycles that renew, replenish and create abundance. It has become a robber economy a rubber economy of taking out the last bit of fertility from the soil, the last drop of water from our lakes, the last bit of life from our biodiversity, and the last bit of the ability of Gaia to self-regulate her climate. These are all 
economies of theft based on the linear extraction through violent form. The earth is calling us to change our ways. We can either learn the lessons from these conflicts, from these violence, including the violence of Paris. Go back to the violence in Syria. Turn to the war against the earth and say we will make change. Or the powers that be, the corporate empires of today, will continue to paint the conflicts and the violence as if it is only about religion, criminalizing the fates that give meaning to people. To protect themselves for how long? 10 years? 20 years? 30 years? There is no business on a dead planet. The corporate leaders and the politicians who serve them need to wake up to this. Every year, because of a chemical industrial agriculture model, 12 million hectares of fertile land are being lost to desertification. That's a 20 million ton of food production lost every year. It's also uprooting people. Uprooted people have nowhere to go. 200 million refugees in the world today. And all assessments by the UN agencies indicate that by the year 2050, if business carries on as usual, we're going to have a billion refugees. One seventh of humanity uprooted? No society will be stable. No society will be peaceful. No society will be sustainable. We face climate havoc, but we also face the devastation of the land and the soil and the disintegration of societies. And it is happening so fast that we can actually see that society after society could disintegrate like Syria has been made to disintegrate, first through the war through agriculture and then through real wars. This disintegration requires a response not a violence response to accelerate the degeneration and decay, but a peaceful response to create a new renewal of human life, a new renewal of our capacity for compassion, for sharing the beautiful resources of this earth. The same kind of agriculture that giving us, is, that's given us 40% of the greenhouse gas is leading to climate change, is leading to the uprooting of people and the destruction of soil. On the other hand, an agriculture of peace, a non-violent agriculture, can rebuild the regenerative capacity of the earth, provide a 100% answer to getting rid of emissions, including the stocks of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But most importantly, it's that agriculture of care that allows every hand to have meaning, to have place, to rebuild their place on this planet. Oikos, our home. Economy was never supposed to mean the destruction of the planet, our home. The economy has lost its way, politics has lost its way. Leaders are losing their way through the blindness and arrogance of violence. That is why I am going to go to Paris in a pilgrimage of peace, to commit myself once again to a pact for the earth, a pact for peace. Three days before the tragedy of Paris, I was in fact right in that neighborhood, planting a garden of hope with the farmers of the greater Paris region who want to make Paris organic, with movements like Solidarity that believe that we are one humanity, and with beautiful people from every migrant community. That's what made me so happy about what Paris is. It is the world together in all its diversity. Let us remember that peaceful coexistence of diversity at this time where all minds are working on the belief that diversity is a problem and needs to be exterminated through violent means. Join me in this path for the planet, for humanity, for each other. Today, 
we must remember we have only one home, which is our one planet. Our first citizenship is as Earth citizens. We are all part of one common humanity, beyond our diversities of religion and colours and gender and ethnicities. We have only one work, only one economy, the economy of healing the earth, of apologising and saying, we will give all our love, we will give all our care, we will give all our intelligence and creative form so that humanity can have a future.